okay, now we know that the pool holds approximately 104,000 litres of water, let's move on to filtration. It's a good idea to start at the beginning. Make sure that your water level is at least halfway up the skimmer box so that the pump is not sucking air. If this happens for prolonged periods, you'll risk damaging the pump. Next, make sure you empty your skimmer basket of general rubbish every couple of days, daily in the case of high winds or if you're in a leafy area. Oh, here's a tip. Never bash a full leaf basket empty on the coping. It will eventually break if you keep pounding it. Pull the debris out by hand instead and give it a quick hose out, or have a spare and let it dry out. Next, check the hair and lint filter found at the entrance to the pump. This doesn't need to be done as often, but try to get to it at least once a fortnight. Always prime your pump by filling it to the top of the inlet. This will save costly repairs down the track. Make sure that both surfaces and the O-ring are clean, and that the O-ring is well lubricated with an approved lubricant. If you don't get a secure seal when you replace the lint pot, air can enter the system and dramatically reduce your pump's performance. Now, how long should the pump run? Well, we know from our earlier calculation that the pool holds 104,000 litres. This pump has a flow rate of 300 litres per minute. Therefore, the pump would have to run for a little under six hours to turn over the whole pool. And this is a pretty good rule of thumb. A danger sign with any pump is water leaking from the casing, or a whistle or hum coming from within the unit while operating. This unusual noise is a likely sign of problems with the bearings or mechanical seal, and needs to be looked into as soon as possible by a qualified technician. Don't forget though, have a talk to your pool professional at your local pool shop, as the filtration time in Melbourne is different to what it is in Townsville. They will also be able to advise you on the flow rate of your pump.